in the midst of this, in the midst of this terrible uh, refugee crisis and everything that's happened to the Crimean Serbs in the past week, at the same time, there's been a lot of talk coming out of Washington about Srebrenica and what happened there. Surveillance photos alleging to show mass graves of Muslim men. There are thousands of Muslim men missing by all accounts. Are there mass graves outside of Srebrenica? What happened to the thousands of Muslim men and boys who are missing there? I can tell you that in April to May of 1993, an agreement on Srebrenica was signed. It clearly defined it as a safe, demilitarized area where no armed military could be present except for the UN soldiers. We in Republika Srpska cooperated with the UN soldiers and rendered assistance to the civilian Muslim population, which peacefully stayed in Srebrenica, Zepa, Garajda, Sarajevo and Bihać for three years. Years. But instead of disarming the Muslim formations, as they had committed themselves under the agreement on Srebrenica signed by me and General Morillon, the United Nations forces turned those safe areas into terrorist and fundamentalist bases from where our villages and towns were attacked. Muslims from Srebrenica and Zepa burnt down more than 200 Serbian villages around those two places and killed all the Serb civilian population in many other villages. What happened to the Muslim men and boys who were missing? Let me give you a broader explanation. Starting from 1993, we didn't take a single action against Srebrenica or Zepa, despite watching how the Muslim side was being armed. We shot down one such helicopter on the outskirts of Zepa two or three months ago. What happened in Srebrenica and Zepa could never have happened if the Muslims hadn't launched an attack from Srebrenica and Zepa, which was part of their offensive to liberate and lift the siege of Sarajevo. The Muslims attacked the enclave of Sarajevo, also a safe area, though it was not defined as such by any kind of agreement between the two parties. The Muslim attack was carried out from the exclusion zone on Mans Igman and Bielishnitsa, from which the Republika Srpska had pulled out its forces in 1993 and which had been in confidence handed over to the peacekeeping forces with the intention to prevent the presence of both ours and Muslim forces. But the Muslim forces used that situation to their own advantage. They massacred everybody whom they captured alive and killed several of our soldiers in the villages of Vishnitsa and Banja Lučica. We retaliated with a counter-offensive in that area. We took maximum precautions to avoid casualties among civilians and representatives of the UN profile. Given the fact that NATO aviation was pounding airstrikes on us, including civilian targets on the outskirts of Srebrenica and Zepa. We successfully finished that operation near Srebrenica and Zepa with the help of the soldiers of the Dutch battalion, the representatives of the world community who were present in Srebrenica, and representatives of the UN pro Four forces who were present in Zepa, thanks to the personal engagement of General Smith and General Nikolai and my own engagement. We created an opportunity for all the civilian population to arrive in Srebrenica, Protocha, and checkpoint number two in Vodchenica in Zepa without being forced as it was stipulated by the agreement. At their request, the civilians could be evacuated to any other place they wanted to. We evacuated them to the Kladnya region. We registered all persons fit for war who had gathered there, civilian populations and those that had surrendered their arms. We immediately asked the International Red Cross and UN Pro 4 to mediate their exchange for our Serb civilians, whom the Muslims have been holding hostage since 1992. Even before the war broke out, and a huge number of civilians from the Muslim-controlled territories near Tuzla, Zanica, Mostar, Zagreb, whom they had rounded up during the war, and also Serbian soldiers and officers who were driven into captivity during the war. Unfortunately, they didn't give a positive answer to our gesture of goodwill, and we expect the world community to exert pressure on them and make them carry out the swap along the principle of a person for a person, and all for all, in accordance with an agreement reached by the state commissions. Part of the male population from Srebrenica, which had committed atrocities against the Serbs, fought their way to Tuzla and Kladnya, and some even towards Serbia that day, evidently for fear of revenge for the atrocities that they had committed. 
They were apparently convinced that the Muslim forces from Tuzla, which had launched a counterattack from the opposite direction, would save them. They must have thought they were strong enough to open the way to Tuzla. Fierce battles were waged there and both sides suffered severe losses. Part of the Muslim forces fought their way to Tuzla as it was emphasized by their television. The world wants to know what happened in Srebrenica. Can he simply tell us, is he saying that the Muslims who have disappeared were fighting the Serbs and were killed in combat? Are, there, are they being held prisoner and could be released in an exchange of some kind? I think that most of them fought their way into a Muslim-controlled territory, is what Rashim Delic eventually told the Muslim parliament and said that he would form a division in Srebrenica in no time. One small part of them surrendered. Those who surrendered were handed over or will be handed over to the International Red Cross. Some of them certainly died. Both theirs and our people died. You can ask representatives of international organizations who were present in Zeppa about that. We buried their dead in Muslim graves in that territory. There were, there were no executions and there are no mass graves. Only those who died in battles were buried. For hygienic reasons, their bodies had to be collected and buried in appropriate places until the warring parties agreed to exchange the remains of the dead with each other. So he, want, he wants peace. How does he feel being branded a war criminal? I'm going to answer this question now. I've expected that because all of you who come from Western countries have cliches in your head and ask similar questions. I have partly followed that accusation of the Hague Tribunal against me. I am a person who belongs to my people with all my heart, just like my ancestors. Neither I nor my people were the first to start that war. I don't recognize any trials except the trial of my own people. I don't need to defend myself because these idiotic accusations come from those centers which have been churning out lies through PR and similar organizations, creating such a chaos in these territories that the world community doesn't know, doesn't see or simply doesn't want to see a way out of all this.